Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Jim. Uh, John, sorry. Um, thank you, all of you. And uh, it's my great honor to be with you here uh, this afternoon. And thank you so much, uh, Villanova uh, community and Villanova professors, Villanova students, and everyone who is in Villanova. And uh, also a special thanks also to uh, Ralph and uh, her assistant, uh, Lauren, who she sings uh, one month and a half every day in the contact, emails. So we're going to see you soon. So today we meet. And uh, thank you again, and so much you appreciate. Today also, um, some people, um, as part of my family, as a new home, but part of my family, Mary uh, Gay, uh, who she is um, the one of uh, the people who make a difference in my life, and her husband, Mary Gay. Um, she is a lawyer and a very big company of law firms in Philadelphia here, uh, Ballard Spar. And I am now staff of Ballard Spar. Thank you so much, Veliki. And again, also thank you so much, part of my family, uh, Laura, and uh, every, and uh, this every, please everyone see this lady. She's so youngest lady, stand up, please. So this youngest lady sings last 10 years. She advocating about their four genocide, and she's still fighting. So this is part of their four, and their four history is going to make a uh, page to her. Thank you so much. Um, again, thank you all of you. And uh, we all know that this month is months of uh, genocide prevention and stand against genocide. So that's why we are here today to send our message. So the message, so through me, so me just the one of the billion of the people whom they have the same story. They face the same difficulties. I'm Hawa Saleh. I'm originally from Darfur. Darfur is in Sudan. And Sudan is at the country since the last 50 years. The generation never saw the peace. That's why I'm a survivor of genocide. I was being raised and born in Darfur along with my uh, nine brothers and sisters. My father was a businessman and farmer. And my mom, she was took care about our family. And we had a good life. In early 2003, everything completely changed in my life. When the militia of Janjaweed thus trained by the government of Sudan engaged and is still engaging, systematically killing and raping and destroyed the village. I lost 100 members of my family and we forced to become as a refugee in the camps. Last nine years, I was in the refugee camps. That's a place I raise up and I come more involved about the women's rights and human rights. It's 
since 2003, I dedicate all my life to end this human being tragedy as genocide. As you may know, in 2003, more than 400,000 people were killed. And more than 2 million people, they displaced to the refugee camps. And some of them brought cross borders to the neighborhood. Since that time, my family and me in the refugee camps, that the place, everyone suffered. No good food, no good education, no good environment, the life insecure. I am witness. Thousand of women raped <coughs> as a weapon so forth. Hundreds of women killed and tortured and beaten. Thousand of villages is completely destroyed. When I became activist, I started to advocate among the women. So I created women's group. And that's why, because when I work in with organizations, I work in with many, uh, many humanitarian organizations, including the human rights organization. And the last organization I was working is the UN Peacekeeper in their four. So along with my colleague and me, we interviewed thousands of ladies who was being raped. And this job is so hard, sometimes I have to do through the night to avoid the follow from spicy for the government of Sudan and the militia of Janjaweed. Militia of Janjaweed, which is the Arab militia trained by the government of Sudan to do all this crime. The time I am the refugee camp, I work in closely with women and interview the women by all violence that's facing women, including youth, including activists. This old job and activism put my life in great danger. Thus, I arrested by the government of Sudan three times, and I kidnapped two times because of my activism. The last arrested is in 2012, 2011. That I never believed that I could survive when I was sentenced to death. That's why I'm here today. Even the little things you you will move forward, you will make difference to the life of thousand people. When I was in jail and I was tortured and I was humiliated. I was dealing so bad by the government of Sudan. 
the many human rights group, including Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and the city of the uh, Pittsburgh, and the congressman in the Pittsburgh, they lobby my case about my release. And then they transfer it to the message and the letters through to the State Department that time. Farmer Hillary Clinton, she was signed about my release, including Susan Rice as a U.S. MPC in her two, in uh, U.S. Uh, MPC in UN Security Council. She as well also signed about my release. I was released. That's why I'm lucky. So when I release, I'm not just lucky because I release, but I escaped from Sudan to Egypt. Then the time I'm in Egypt, I get it, some treatment, and I nominate it by Human Rights Organization and USMPC. Has been nominated the one of the ten of international women of courage that has been leading the women rights and human rights around the world. That's so much nice and exciting to me. But everyone's so proud. The good thing is that when I'm here, after I was awarded, everyone is named it the newborn Hawa. I'm glad United States saved my life, that I'm here to tell you, and I'm so sad to tell you what's going on among my family 11 years and among my people home back. I grant asylum, political asylum, last year, that's so much nice, and the company that present my case, as I mentioned, Ballard's Park. But I'm here today because I'm alive. So you will do something and it will make difference in the life of billions of people. So I'm alive here and I'm giving voice to billions of people. Do you look how the human being family. So today I'm here in my new home and I build a new home, a new family. So that means I have to use two homes. The home that raises you and burn you and the home save your life. And I boss all of them, both of them, I love them. So today, I'm here and I'm so sad. I'm happy to be with you here because I'm alive, but I'm so sad. What's going on? Just this year, 2014, and 1,000, people just last month and this month flew their home because the village is still bombed. Because the militia of Janjaweed and the government of Sudan is still train new militia to continue the same tools and the same way of systematic killing to native of the country. I am from Darfur, so Darfur, that means two words. Dar, that means home, and for the people, they was leading Darfur, and Darfur is their land. So I am from Darfur, and I'm from four tribe. So Darfur is my land. 
That's why even I'm here, I have to fight on behalf of them. Yes, last month, up to today, 200 people were killed. Last week, when students, when they protested about their four serious human rights violations and humanitarian situation is seriously, the people dying, no food. The people dying, there's no health care or medical assistance. The people die because there's no secure life. The Janjaweed and the militia just kill the people daily and rape the women daily. Again, starvation is become the second phase of genocide. And unfortunately, the international community is still silent. In the for Peace and Justice since 2003 up to date, there is more than 13 UN resolution of peace and justice, but nothing implemented. That's why the government of Sudan is continuing to commit the crimes. And the criminal, as wanted by ICC, as the president of Sudan is wanted by ICC, ICC declared this government is commit crimes against genocide, crimes against humanity. They must to arrest them, but it's still free. This is 12 years or 11 years, it's still free. I have last speech in Washington, D.C., last 26. And clearly addressed that since I'm going around to the country, I traveled to 17 states around the country to explain to people how the genocides and how the suffering is affect millions of women's lives. So please, everyone get action. Everyone is stand. So the people is starting and many student movements saying never again, never again. But it's still again and again and again. What does it mean to all of you, as the youngest and new generation, that you could keep this world at peace and justice? In the last conference, I said, this wallet, if the women doesn't come front, never be full of peace and justice. So therefore, humanitarian crisis still ongoing on. Human rights violation still ongoing on. All the suffering still ongoing on. The rape has become the silence in 21 century. You as students, teachers, professors, what's your role? As what I know, the student movements and education as one of the very important tools of change. So get actions. Get advocate. Learn about how the suffering, how the tragedy 
save or affect the billion of people life i'm here to ask all of you to do what you can to do to survive our family member life as students get actions everywhere as teachers and professors get actions everywhere send the letters to your senator write message to your congress let them that what's going on in 11 years in darfur must to stop and peace must to come to the women and children. The people who commit those crimes must to face justice. And as a legal system, please do something. The last message also put some pressures to President Obama administration that the policy of Sudan must to change. Sudan government, it's not just government because it's commit crimes of genocide, crimes of humanity, crimes of all human being tragedy but even the government who deal with terrorists and brotherhood, that's a very danger to the warlords themselves or the peace of the warlords themselves. I'm here to ask all of you, stand. Get action, get noise. And I know this month's many students movement is work around a lot of events. Please, in this event, get everyone to make noise. And I'm here, if there is any questions, if there is any comment, and I hope from today, Villanova University will be my home. That's the race, our issue, our family issue. Sometimes it is very hard for me to talk all of what's happened. Sledding back the memory as how those people there still suffer. I am here very safe, so that's I'm fighting day and night. Sometimes I'm doing, but I feel like it's not enough. I'm doing day and night. The time we are here, we have to sleep. The time we home back, the people just woke up. And then they call me and I have to go to work. So the half of the night, I just spending in the phone. And the other half of the time, to talk to the other people. So please, do as much you can do as students, as everyone. And I know a lot of events was coming. Every, she will mention later, or you can meet her later. She will events, also she will recognize it, the events about the four genocide next to any uh, second of April. Sometimes I'm cry, 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 but this cry is never end. Many people they're saying, "Oh, you don't, you don't be tired." I'm saying, "How I could be tired? And I'm in a safe place. Million of people, life every day, dying, killing. 
<clears throat> they are human beings. They love peace. They have future, but they lost every day. So how we could sleep? I put in one day those all suffering. It could kill my dream and kill my hope, but never kill that. I always remind my grandfathers when I was tired and I'm crying, she told me, if the difficulty come across you, you have to kill the difficulty. Don't let difficulty to kill you. Kill them. So that means you have heart, you have mind, think. Please think with me. Please stand with me. Please cry with me. Thank you so much, Villanova community and Villanova, everyone who commit and who, everyone who organizes events. And thank you so much, Ishan, and everyone. Thank you.